Hello folks, Cass here. Welcome to our channel. In this video we are driving out of Cody, Wyoming using the east entrance into the Yellowstone National Park to explore the lower loop of the park and I'll get to that in a minute. I will post throughout the video just as you see right now a map section of the park with a description showing you exactly where we are. Perhaps this video inspires you to one day explore this park as well. Maybe you already visited in the past. In either case, perhaps these little notes with the park's highlights helps you with future trip planning or just brings back some nice memories from a previous trip. In a subsequent video we will explore the upper loop taking a different road into the park with stunning views as well and enter the park through a different entrance. So make sure you don't miss out on that one. So from Cody to the east entrance of the park, it's about an hour travel depending on traffic and about 52 miles or 84 kilometers. So here we got a little map section again and you can see with the arrow we're going over the Sylvan Pass towards the east entrance in the park. We even encounter still a little bit of snow way up here. I think by the looks of it on the side of the road some perhaps just fell a couple days prior. So the lower loop we are gonna travel today if you would just drive it through it would take about three hours but that's without the traffic and traffic can be very heavy in the summer and then of course hopefully you make many stops at some of the highlights we point out so it will take you naturally much longer. Now we are driving towards Yellowstone Lake still on the same highway you see there with the blue arrow I indicate and in the distance you'll see the Yellowstone Lake appearing just wait till we get around a few corners and I thought it was an absolute stunning view over the lake and to the mountains in the back now to give you a bit of an idea the lower loop trip out of Cody with all the stops we made I mentioned before it said about three hours that's just the loop that's not getting from Cody to the park or back again but anyways it turned for us from Cody and back to Cody again into a 16 hour day um, here we are coming down towards the Yellowstone Lake right now and we see a little bit on the shore here as well uh, say steamboat point so with some of the steam coming up from the ground you can actually hear the growling hear sound the of it and it has a little sound. bit of an egg smell. But as I was saying, it was a 16 hour day for us. We left Cody very early morning and arrived back in town again late that evening. But with the long summer days, daylight was not an issue for us. You will need to purchase a park pass you can get a pass that is valid for a few days so you can return and explore more while in the area. Now here on the map I show you in the west thumb area so that's right next to the lake and they have a boardwalk we can walk around and I think I should also mention do not step off the actual designated walking areas like you see here the boardwalk so you don't step off to the side and here we have some of these stunning views I was talking about and the water of course is hot sometimes it's also some kind of uh, acid in the water so I do recommend do not touch the water if you are with a pet or anything make sure you keep them on the leash and keep them on the walkway as well no, it's my understanding as well you see a hole here in the lake on the lake bottom there are many uh, uh, geysers kind of as well just like you see on land here I checked a bit into it and I think again the lake bottom has these thermal wells as well
see all the uh, different color on the ground from the uh, look at that yellow reminds me of sulfur well it's kind of smells like sulfur as well but uh, all the mineral deposits actually when the steam depends where you stand you see the boardwalk on the right there we walk over this and you see how hot this water is it's literally in some places it's it's boiling What I was trying to say is like we are following the steam as you just seen here, we got a picture and you can feel the heat and the moisture but fortunately also the smell of it. Looks kind of like a different planet, kind of an alien landscape. Yeah, you see a little bit of water bubbling up, but we'll have some other footage where uh, you you literally see it boiling like a pot of water. Now on this map, I'm showing you we are moving westwards towards the Old Faithful. That's the geyser, you may have heard of that. So we're actually traveling the lower loop clockwise. And the blue arrow you've seen there going south, that will get you to the Grand Teton National Park, but you would need a separate park pass for that as well. In the meantime, we arrived at Old Faithful, and you see all the people lining up and sitting around, waiting for the geyser to erupt. And that's what we are looking at right now. So that's the Old Faithful famous world famous i guess geyser and uh, we are just all waiting in anticipation for the geyser to erupt i think it does erupt in average about every 92 minutes plus minus 10 so it's uh i guess that's where the name comes from i should say old faithful and i think we are getting closer i see some bubbling here we go That's what everybody was waiting for. <laughs> Not something you see every day. <laughs> and what makes this here special, you don't have to wait for hours upon hours. As I mentioned, it's, it's quite regular. About every 90, 92 minutes, give or take about 10 either way, and you're, you're pretty close doesn't last that long the eruption I, I didn't really time it but it seemed, seemed short but I guess we we're just waiting and waiting and then when it started to happen I don't know maybe two three four minutes but regardless it was very nice to see and here it's dying down and I guess you gotta wait another 92 minutes if you want to see it again or okay, click replay on my video. Here we spot the bison a bit in the distance. Okay. There's a river wa walking, a river flowing through the park as well here in this area and uh, has all these boardwalks and here in this uh, geyser I guess or pot, whatever you want to name it, you see how this water is bubbling, it's just like a pot of hot water on your stove. Then over here we have some discoloration from the hot water with the mineral deposits. And here's another close-up look, what I was just mentioning about uh, boiling water. So we walked a fair distance around here, um, kind of in a loop, all on the boardwalks of course, and as you can see there are some people around. In the distance are the hotels and the visitor centers, we'll drop by there in just a minute once we get over there, but first of all we want to check everything out, not sure if you can hear it, but the sound and the roar 
from the boiling water. As you can see here, little sinkholes. So that's just one of the reasons why you absolutely must stay on the boardwalk. If your hat blows off, so be it. You cannot venture out and try to retrieve it. So make sure you follow all the parks regulations and safety measures, literally for your own safety. Nice and colorful, look at that. I believe this one is called the Castle Geyser because with the mineral build up it starts to look a little bit like a a castle. Uh -huh. Looking down the valley, don't forget like, share, comment, subscribe. And it almost looks a little bit out of this world all these uh, s all these pools boiling away and the steam coming up everywhere I can recommend the trip here it's very nice here again we're at the castle geyser it's just kind of rumbling away In the distance there are a few people waiting but so said you may wait quite a long time. Hotel stays in Yellowstone Park need to be booked I think about 12 to 14 months in advance and yes you heard me right 12 to 14 months in advance if you want to stay within the park. We decided to stay in Cody because we wanted to check out Cody anyways and uh, it's a nice little drive. Here we are in the Old Faithful Inn. And then check this out a bit. Look at this construction. Quite amazing. It's something else, isn't it? Alright, we are back outside again, checking out a few more things before we move on. Well, here we got stuck without in a traffic jam. We are leaving the old fateful area, heading north, and we thought it's just a heavy traffic volume, people pulling over, but in fact, it uh, apparently was a bison herd crossing way up the road, so it held us up for probably almost 45 minutes. Until uh, they finally crossed the road, as they crossed everything on their own time. Now these areas here, we are at the fountain paint pots. You see this again on the little map there. Uh, that was just right after, well, the traffic jam is still kind of going on. So we decided instead of sitting in a traffic jam, we're going to pull out and go for a little walk on the boardwalks here and check out this area as well. These are a little bit dried up right now. Well, dried up. I think these are mud. Uh, I don't know what you call them. Mud fountains. A bit so It's just uh, a soup of mud and water kind of bubbling away and then of course the opening here where the steam is coming out again a warning unsafe stay on the walk and that goes for anything and everything in the park stay on the designated areas And not just stay in the designated areas, also don't pet the fluffy cows known as bisons, please. Can you just imagine what's going on below the ground here? Because I think in fact we are actually standing in a massive volcanic caldera measuring about 43 by 28 miles or 70 by 45 kilometers roughly.
the distance I'm not sure if you can see we will get a bit closer there's a bison herd over there right on the edge of the uh, forest it's actually quite amazing they know where they can walk and step on and where they can't Here we are a bit closer, but we are not that close. We just zoomed it in with the camera because again, for your own safety, be yeah. careful, don't get too close because uh, they can run pretty fast. <laughs> you may think you're far enough away, but as I said, once they get going, they are in no time where you are at. We have a few other ones grazing away while we are on the way and actually just arrived now at the west entrance to the park if uh, that goes left there and these falls are the Gibbons or I should say Gibbon Falls not Gibbons but they are the Gibbon Falls we we'll peek down the valley here and a still picture or two And we are moved on to the next spot. It's the artist's paint pot and blood geyser area. Here you can kind of see a bit too how the landscape evolves. You see trees uh, that are died off in the meantime as uh, the water and all that stuff shifted from where they are flowing to. Here again these bubbling and these hot water pools I was talking about some of them make for absolutely gorgeous pictures he is a crow again knows exactly where to go and which water to drink from we just followed this one on her or his adventure I think it's a crow, maybe I mistake it's a raven. I always struggle to differentiate the two. If you know, leave a comment please. I think here we spotted a coyote or a coyote, however which way you want to say this. And here we arrived at the next spot and you see it on the map. These are the upper and lower falls of the Yellowstone River. And then we look down the valley oh, here. It's a waterfall, huh? It's quite the waterfall, isn't it? So we're gonna walk down here in, in a in a minute, but I'm just gonna swing uh, a little bit around, give you a little bit of canyon view here. How this looks from the location we are currently uh, standing on. As I said, this is often referred to as the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Here we have the Upper Falls from the Yellowstone River. We didn't go up there, but you can see they're fairly close. So we went down uh, 360 switchback walking path. I think it's about 15, maybe 20 minutes to walk down, and maybe slightly longer back up because it is actually fairly steep. So keep that in mind. So we are right at the bottom now, beside the uh, river in the viewing area. You see how the river comes down, as I said, a bit further up is the upper falls and the water barely has a chance to settle down and it already arrives at the uh, lower falls here. And here we go, right over the edges. It's quite impressive. 
but I'm always a little bit worried that I drop the camera or anything silly like that, never to be seen again. Let's look down here. It's quite the volume of water going down and then flowing down the canyon. still pictures here admire the scenery see the rainbow there here again it's quite fascinating the sides of the cliffs from all the uh, water mist all nice and green. Yeah. Here you see the sign upper falls or lower falls kind of with the distances but as I said it's a steep incline or decline whichever way you want to put this. One more time, this is not snow, this is just mineral deposits, all white, but it's time for us uh, to move on to the next location again. Just Here we go, we are it's almost the full loop away. around, we are arriving at the Mud Volcano location. And this place was actually rather smelly. The smell of rotten eggs. As I said, some places were stronger than others. Anyways, with this slowly coming to an end, don't forget to like, subscribe, perhaps share, and join us again for part two then, when we explore together the upper loop of the Yellowstone National Park and take a different entrance. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.